Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk about how you can help your children learn how to think. Now I think we've talked a lot about, yes, we all want to raise smart children, and that's great, but oftentimes what comes around with smart children is they become rote learners. So what you really want, and in the beginning, that's what learning is, it is rote learning. But as, the ki as your children get older, you want them to be critical thinkers. You want them to be able to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information. Now when they're just little, like even two or three or four or five, you can teach them one of the basic things of critical thinking skills, which is compare contrast. You can take their shoes and have them compare contrast the colors and the shapes and the size and so forth. You can take their clothes or their hats or any kind of a toy they have, they can compare contrast those. In books as you're reading, you can ask them different questions that will stimulate their thinking skills and their imagination. But as they grow older, you want to break things down more critically. You want to help them to analyze things. When they're analyzing things, they're taking things and they're breaking those things apart. And they're looking at, very, at things very carefully and very methodically. Synthesizing is to take all those parts and to put it back together, like putting a puzzle back together to see how all the pieces fit together. And um, evaluating is to, that includes compare and contrast, but you're evaluating, you're looking at things very, very carefully. You're in synthesizing it down, you're breaking it down, you're bullet, bringing it back up, and you're looking at things and compare contrasting. So it's synthesize, anal analyze, synthesize, and evaluating information. Now, you want to do this in a fun way. And I'll tell you one thing that's really interesting is actually when they learn a musical instrument because they're using the entire brain at once, they're actually building critical thinking skills just by the mere fact that they're learning a musical instrument. If you want to take it one step further, I suggest you getting this book, Harris Burdick by Chris Van Allsburg. Now, this is an amazing book and it's amazing background of the story behind it. And I want to read this to you because it will help you to understand that it's different than any of his books. He said, I first saw the drawings in this book a year ago in the home of a man named Peter Winders. Though Mr. Winders is retired now, he once worked for a children's book publisher, choosing the stories and pictures that would be turned into books. Thirty years ago, a man called at, at Peter Widmore's office, introducing himself as Harris Burdick. Mr. Burdick explained that he had written 14 stories and had drawn many pictures for each one. He brought them with him just one drawing from each story to see if Winders liked his work. Peter Winders was fascinated by the drawings. He told Burdick he would like to read the stories that went with them as soon as possible. The artist agreed to bring the stories back the next morning. He left the 14 drawings with Winders, but he did not return the next day or the next day or the next day. <clears throat> At Harris, Burdick was never heard of or seen again. Over the years, Winders tried to find out who Burdick was and what had happened to him, but he discovered nothing. To this day, Harris' verdict remains a mystery. His dis disappearance is not the only mystery left behind. What were the stories that went with these fascinating pictures and illustrations? There are some clues. Burdick had written a title and caption for each picture. When I told Peter Winders how difficult it was to look at the drawings and their captions without imagining the story, he smiled and left the room. He returned with a dust-covered cardboard box. Inside were dozens of stories, all inspired by the Burdick drawings. They had been written years ago by Wender's children and their friends. Okay, so this book contains these 14 drawings and their titles and captions. Now when you look at these, you can see that they are perfect for helping your children to develop imagination and critical thinking skills. Let me show you a couple of them. Here is one, and it shows this woman, she's laying asleep on the bed, or dead, and a book is open, and out of the book is a plant, and it's growing. And the title is, Mr. Linden's Library, and here's the caption. He had warned her about the book. Now it was too late. Okay, that's the one, and here is another one. Here is this woman, and she's raising this scary-looking knife to this pumpkin, and the pumpkin is glowing. And if you look at the woman, her face is being lit up by the light from this pumpkin. 
The caption is, just dessert. And it, it said she lowered the knife and it grew even brighter. And this is how all, now there's one in here that I actually saw in a Stephen King book. And you'll have to go and get the book. That's, it's called Harris Burdick by Chris Van Allsburg. And again, he's showing these 14 drawings from this man and also the captions. So what you could do together with your children is you could show them one. And one at a time, you can create your own stories about what you think that that particular story is and include in it all of the things that help with critical thinking skills and imagination. This would be a super fun um, activity to do with your kids and at the same time it's going to be teaching them writing skills. Then you can get together as a family and you can all share your stories. All right, let me end with this quote by Dr. Seuss. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? And that's what we do when we become critical and imaginative thinkers. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.